Good morning, everyone. Someone once said, what's the difference between a agnostic, an atheist, and a believer? And they said the agnostic, the atheist says, I deny. The agnostic says, I don't know. And the believer says, Adoshem, God's name, pronounced correctly when you're allowed to say it. Ronald Reagan once said that uh, he doesn't understand how there could be atheists. When you look around this world, you see all the beauty, all the majesty, all the brilliance, all the genius of creation. How could you deny God's existence? And he said that he would like to host a beautiful dinner for atheists and prepare the most de beautiful delicacies, the finest dishes prepared to perfection. And then after the dinner, he would like to ask the atheists if they believe there is a cook. Well, this week's Torah portion talks about the story of the golden calf. We are after three months after the Jews left Egypt and witnessed the greatest miracles of the ten plagues, the splitting of the sea, and the revelation at Mount Sinai where they actually saw God's presence, they fashion a golden calf and celebrate this calf by dancing around it. And they actually say, this is the God that took us out of Egypt. And the question is, how can they say this is their God after they experience God in, in, in so many miraculous divine ways? And God says to Moses, let me dis destroy this nation because they are a stiff necked people. Am kishe orefu. They're stiff necked. After everything I've done, they still worship a golden calf. And Moses pleads for forgiveness. But ironically, Moses says to God, please do not abandon and forsake us. Continue to be in our midst, in our presence. We want to be close to you. And when Moses pleads for forgiveness, he actually says to God, the reason you should forgive them is because they are a stiff-necked people. And the question is, is if stiff-necked was the reason God wants to destroy us because we're stubborn, we don't change, why would Moses use that as a defense to say, forgive us because we're stiff-necked? And clearly the answer is that God was saying to Moses, they're stiff-necked, they can't change, they're stubborn. I want to destroy them. And Moses says, that's precisely why you should take them as your people and forgive them. Why? Because what other nation will persevere in their devotion and loyalty to God like this people? Because they're stiff-necked, they will never bow to any other gods, to any other nations. They will never assimilate. They will never abandon their identity. Which other nation has gone through so much persecution, but yet has remained so devoted and loyal to God and to Judaism? All the great empires from Egypt and Persia, Romans, the Greeks, they're all gone. But we're still here because we're stiff-necked. We don't bow. We don't capitulate. We don't surrender. We don't forsake our faith. And therefore, Moses says, that's precisely why you should forgive them, because their biggest vice in the long run will become their greatest virtue. It's interesting that the golden calf is sandwiched between the laws of Shabbat, both right before and right after the story of the golden calf. And perhaps the reason is because we know that Achad Ha'am said, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jewish people. Shabbat is the symbol of the eternity of the Jewish people. And therefore, surrounding the golden calf is the laws of Shabbat, which represents the fact that Shabbat declares our faith in God, that God created the world in six days and rests on Shabbat. And that faith in God has never parted from the Jewish people. We continue to be loyal to God and keep Shabbat despite everything we've endured and experienced. And once again, this comes to light after October 7th, that the whole world, starting obviously with the Arab world, but even beyond that, anti-Semitism around the world has turned against the Jews once again. But yet the Jews have remained strong and devoted and committed. And we stand with our heads high. Yes, like a stiff-necked people. And we say, we will not bow. We will not despair. We will not give up in light of all the anti-Semitism that we face. We will remain tall, proud Jews and declare our faith in God and in our people and our land and our heritage. When the hostages were taken, there were three friends from the Nova Festival that were taken hostage. A brother and a sister, sister Itai and Maya Regev, and their friend, Omer 
Shem Tov. The girl, Maya, 18 years old, she was shot in the leg. The terrorists were hitting her wounded leg and they took her off to Gaza together with her brother Itai and Omer. Maya was separated from Itai and his friend Omer. And Itai and Omer were in captivity, being held hostage by Hamas terrorists. Well, in the exchanges, in the hostage releases, the brother and the sister independently were freed, Itai and Maya, and they came back to Israel. But Omer is still in captivity as we speak now as a hostage. And they told over many stories of their captivity. One of the stories that Itai told over was that he was together with Omer and they were served meals, barely like once or twice a day. And one time the terrorists brought them in a bottle of grape juice. And Itai and Omer looked at each other and they said, Itai said, you know, I come from a traditional home where we make Kiddush every Friday night. We had a Shabbat dinner with Chalot. And Omer said, me too. I also come from a home where we kept Shabbat. We had a Shabbat dinner every week. And so they said, you know what? Let's save this grape juice for Friday night and we'll make Kiddush. And sure enough, that's what they did. Friday night, as best as they can, they took a bagel. They found some salt on the bottom of a, of a pretzel bag and they set up like bread and salt and they poured the grape juice into a cup and they covered their heads and they're being held hostage in Gaza. They made Kiddush to sanctify Shabbat and welcome Shabbat and declare, Yom Hashishi, God created the world and God runs the world. And then they took a little sip and poured the grape juice back into the bottle for next Friday night. They did this every Friday night in captivity. And it, I said, after they made Kiddush, they would hug each other and say, Shabbat Haba, next Yom Shishi, Babayit, we should make Kiddush in our home. And he told over this remarkable story, how they maintained their faith and defied their captors in Gaza, in captivity. And now they're pleading for the release of Omer. But until Omer comes home, the Rega family and the Shemto family gets together on Friday night and they do Kiddush together and they welcome Shabbat. And they think about Omer who's still drinking that grape juice and saying Kiddush every single Friday night. That's the story of the Jewish people. Despite everything we've endured, we never lost our faith in God. Yes, we are a stiff-necked people. And that is what has preserved our nation. Have a wonderful day.